Yo, all right, I had to talk about legacy. Not um, of a particular fighter or anything, but what defines legacy? Now, how do you define legacy uh, in the sport of boxing? Um, what do you consider when you consider a fighter's legacy? You know, uh, you know, I always hear and see videos about you know this fighter's legacy better than this fighter's legacy. This, that, and the third. Um, you know, legacy is one of those things that is uh, a broad array of things that can be you know taken into consideration when you consider a fighter's legacy. And one thing that's different about boxing than in other sports, such as basketball and football, in, in those sports, you have, you know, if the Steelers have the number one defense and they play in the Colts with the 20th ranked defense, and two quarterbacks put up similar numbers, Shouldn't the quarterback putting up numbers on a better defense be considered better than a quarterback putting up numbers on a significantly lower ranked defense? You know, the the fact of the matter is they're not matched up directly against each other, you know. So when we measure the legacy of a individual in a team sport, such as basketball or baseball, you know, it's hard to say, you know, who can say that Barry Bonds wasn't a great baseball player because he never won a ring, you know? Was Alex Rodriguez great, you know, when he was hitting 50, 60 home runs in Seattle? Or was he great when he won a championship hitting 25 home runs in New York? You know, which one? You know, which one made him a great player? or What defined his legacy? The major difference is in boxing, there is a one-on-one -on -one and your competition is directly related to the guy that you're playing. You know, there are a few sports, you know, you know, even like golf is an individual sport, but you're not literally playing against someone else. You know, it's very few, you know, tennis, you know, you're directly, you know, Rafael Nadal might beat Roger Federer, you know. And when the match is over, who can you, how can you argue who is better on that day? You know, you can't, you know, it's hard to, you know, you can't say that, well, Federer is still a better player. He just can't beat Nadal, you know, I mean, that's kind of ludicrous, right? And, um, you know, so, so what do you consider? You know, how do you, it's much different defining a boxer's legacy than it is defining the legacy of an individual in a team sport. And does every fighter have a legacy? Since we always talk about legacies, we only talk about certain fighters' legacies. I'm not going to mention the two names because we always hear so many damn posts about those same two fuckers. And, you know, and it's been a debate that I've heard often lately, you know, probably because of those two, you know. But no one has ever clearly defined what goes into legacy. You know, like with other team sports, they, they mention championships. You know, how many rings Jordan had or Kobe had or Wayne Gretzky or uh, fucking, um, I don't know, Jer Derek Jeter, or, you know. You know, they always mention championships. And you see, the thing about boxing is... Which is so weird because championships don't mean shit in boxing. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you imagine, you know, because the Lions won six games, that they were just going to award the Lions the, you know, Super Bowl. You know, make them the champions just because they, they won six games this year instead of two. You know? Be ludicrous, right? That's how boxing is. That's what they do. You know? I even um, I posted a blog one time. On um, one of the chats, I forgot which one it was. But if you if you Wikipedia this, one of the organizations, I almost want to say it was the WBO, but it could have been the WBA. They actually moved a guy up in rank 
after he died. If that is not the epitome of, of bogus and fraud, I don't know what is. I don't know how more bogus you could possibly be. How does a dude move up in rank after he is, he's deceased? You know, that is enough to let you know that championships don't mean shit in boxing. So you absolutely have to take away, I mean, just discredit the, the whole championship thing altogether. And it kills me to always hear or see that, um, you know, every time I read something about Pacquiao, it's, the, it always starts with the eight divisions, eight titles, bullshit, you know? That man ain't won no eight titles, you know? You lucky to give him two for real, you know what I'm saying, let alone eight. It's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? Titles absolutely mean shit. So I hate to hear it mentioned when you're talking about a boxer. You know, it means absolutely nothing. And last of all, it's wins and losses, you know? Wins and losses. Now, it's funny. This is a funny subject because, you know, it's like, you know, guys will say, well, so-and-so went... You know, three and zero in the NBA Finals, or somebody else won two Super Bowls and never lost none. Whatever the case may be, you know, John Elway lost three Super Bowls. Okay. Well, think about the fact that all of the quarterbacks who never even make it to a Super Bowl, never even get there, a chance to represent. You know. So, how bad is a loss? You know, a lot of people say, well, this guy lost to this guy. Well, look how many good fights he had until he finally lost. You know, look how many top-notch guys that he fought until he lost. So, when we talk about wins or losses, you know, does that count against a fighter's legacy? Um, you know, if... If a dude like John Elway, like I say, you know, he, I think he lost three Super Bowls before he finally won one. Do you hold that against him and say he's not a great quarterback because he lost in three Super Bowls? Just to get to three in itself is an accomplishment. You know, it's hundreds of quarterbacks that I can name who never even played in the Super Bowl, let alone three of them. You know, not to mention that the fact the guy won two more after he lost the three, you know? I'm sure guys like Donovan McNabb would love to get back to another Super Bowl. Or, um, you know, a guy like Michael Vick would love to make it to a Super Bowl, you know? To have been and played in a Super Bowl and lost. Or a guy like Kobe who, uh, you know, lost to the Celtics and lost to the Pistons in the finals. And people say, well, Jordan never lost in the finals. Well, you know, maybe Jordan wasn't playing against, you know, LeBron James, you know. I mean, you know, how do you define or how do you how do you knock a guy for losing on the biggest stage even after he's won, you know? I don't know. It's crazy. So it's another thing to consider. How much goes against a fighter in a loss? You know, these are a lot of things to consider. You know, how do you define a legacy? That is the question. You know, I would like for us to come into agreement on how we define a legacy. Our, um, let's say, YouTube criteria on defining a fighter's legacy. You know, let's figure out is losing to prime opposition so bad. You know, do we really hold a guy for losing in a big fight? You know, especially if he's won other big fights, you know. And does every fighter have, have a legacy? Because I only hear about a handful of guys, you know. So, you know, when we talk about legacies, let's talk about more than just two guys, you know. I, I got the chance to see a guy by the name of Emmanuel Gustis fight a few weeks ago at the Silver Dome. This guy got, like, a stupid record, like, 30 wins and, like, 28 losses, you know? 
but the guy can flat out scrap, you know? And there ain't a fighter, you know, around who wouldn't say that this guy can fight, you know? 20 losses on his record don't, you know, does it mean that he was crappy as a fighter? No, nah, the guy was fucking, a, a, you know, he was a fucking fighter, a scrapper. You know, he danced in the ring, clown and fool around, but the dude could scrap, you know. And if you go YouTube it, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Burton at the time, I believe, gave Floyd Mayweather his toughest fight. Not the closest, but his toughest fight. Toughest fight Floyd was ever in, you know, and he'll admit that. You know, I've seen videos of Floyd and his uncle have said that too. YouTube it. But uh, let's try and figure out how we define a legacy. What goes into a legacy? You know, how do we, what do we consider in a legacy? And we can't really necessarily compare it to other team sports. It's so much different from other team sports. The only, it's only a few sports that you can almost compare it to. You know, like I said, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head is tennis because you're directly playing against your opponent who in, in directly affects your performance, you know? Your performance is only as good as your opponent's, or lack thereof, in a sense, you know? Some days you had good nights, some days you had bad nights, you know? Kobe can have an off day and his team still win. Or he can have a brilliant night and his team still lose. Not in boxing. It's just you and the other guy. So we're different from other team sports. So we really can't use analogies of other team sports when it comes to boxing. So, uh, YouTube community, let's come to agreements. Let's get this going. Let's see how we can define what a fighter's legacy is. Mm -hmm.